Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is design of FRC structural elements in concrete design add-on. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and PR in the company Luba Software. For instance, the website, the German and English webinars, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today and will answer your questions together with Alexander. Yeah, but my two colleagues can introduce themselves. Hello, everyone. My name is Paul Kiloch. I'm working as a support uh, engineer um, at Luba Software, and uh, I'm working on a support hotline and also on the development. Um, in terms of the development, especially for concrete design and um, in context of concrete design, I'm happy to show you today new features in the concrete design add-on for designing uh, fiber reinforced concrete slabs today. Yeah. Good afternoon, also from my side. My name is Alexander Meyerhofer. I'm uh, responsible for the development of uh, concrete uh, design uh, in our firm um, and also working on the geotechnical uh, development, geotechnical analyze module. Uh, I will answer today your questions in the chat. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off the webcam that the attendees can see the full screen. For the attendees who participate the first time, you see a control panel on the uh, right side of your screen usually. You can yeah, show it with that arrow and then can you enter a question here and we will answer you. You can also watch the full webinar and then email your questions to info at global.com. To the agenda today, Paul will activate the fiber reinforced concrete design. Yeah, and create, yeah, by creating a new material type. Yeah, and then he will model and design the structure components and do a design of the ultimate and serviceability limit state. Okay, then I hand over the screen to Paul. Paul, it's your turn. Okay, thanks, uh, Andreas. Um, I would like to start at first with a short overview of this uh, steel building. Um, because I would like to um, design a slab for this steel building actually. And um, for this, I would like to use two separate files. So one file is the steel building, which uh, gives me the support forces or support reactions. Um, and then I will uh, create a slab and transform these support reactions um, as loads into the other file. Um, and therefore, I will show you a new feature in the uh, load wizard, uh, which, wo which was uh, implemented some weeks ago. So that will be also quite interesting for you, I guess. And then I will do the concrete design um, with the uh, fiber reinforced concrete material. So um, maybe just as a short overview in this uh, structure, um, I have here this nodal supports on which I will get uh, support reactions. These support reactions will um, give me the loads for this lab. And I have here um, yeah, basically six load cases, self-weight snow, and four load cases for the wind load. Um, what's maybe also important to mention is the numbering here of the um, nodal supports or nodes, um, I will use this numbering also in our um, second file in which I will um, enter the slab. So therefore, I will create a new file. What's now important is that the um, steel building and the new um, file for the slab are in the same project uh, folder in our global center. That's important regarding the uh, new option in the load wizard to overtake the support reactions as load. I will come back to this topic um, later and mention this a second time. Now we'll just enter the name here. That will be 
foundation slab and I will activate the concrete design add-on. So um, what I will show you today is basically part of the concrete design add-on. So we will um, create a material that's fiber concrete uh, material or fiber concrete um, and the design itself is running in the add-on um, for concrete design. For the standard I will use the national annex for Germany but these features which I will show you today or um, the design approach, uh, design approach and the equations are also um, part of the other national annexes for the Eurocode 2. Okay, that's basically all. Just one um, topic I have to check is the Lose Wizard that it was activated because we will need it afterwards. That looks good. Can confirm it. And then this new file was created and I will switch back to the structure with the steel building or file with the steel building and I will select my nodes here and with control C I and control V I can import it here copy and paste so we have now the position of our nodes with the columns from the steel hall and uh, I do not need here the lines and also not the um, nodal support so uh, I can delete the lines here then open here this chapter types for nodes then we have here the nodal supports and I can delete them as well and what we now got is just here the uh, yeah, nodes for the columns and if I do a right click and activate the numbering then we see here exactly the same uh, numbers like in our um, file with the steel building. That will be important afterwards if we transmit or transform the um, support reactions to nodal loads. Okay, I will switch off the numbering just to have a clear overview of the structure. Um, next topic um, is um, creating the material for the slab. So I'm entering a new material, go to the library and then I can select here this fiber concrete. Um, fiber concrete was already um, implemented also in previous versions. Um, so um, it was already possible for you to create a slab with material type fiber concrete. But what's now new in the latest state is that um, slabs with the material type fiber concrete are now also considered um, in the concrete design add-on. So basically that is the new feature feature what I would like to show you today. So I'm setting up the filters here and select this material. Okay and now you see here this material type um, fiber concrete and if that material was um, assigned to a um, slab then the program or the, the add-on uh, concrete design knows that it has to use the approaches um, for fiber concrete or fiber reinforced uh, concrete material in the add-on. Um, now if you would like to edit the material properties for the fiber concrete then you can switch to the uh, tab material values and at the bottom end of this tab you find here um, steel fiber properties and in this tab here or in, in this chapter of this tab you find here especially the uh, performance classes l1 l2 and these um, yeah, classes are defined by your type of fiber that you have assigned or that you would like to use for your um, design checks. So basically, um, the type of uh, or the shape of these fibers, the material of these fibers, etc., it gives you the um, classes L1 and um, L2, and you can modify this, and this will define the strengths of your 
um, fiber concrete. By default, this was set L1 to 1.2 and L2 to 0 0.9. If you would like to modify that, you can click here on the main menu and activate your user-defined material. And then this is accessible and you can change it. The values itself, they come from the a guideline from the uh, German Committee for Concrete Design or Deutsche Ausschuss für Stahlbetonbau. They released a guideline for fiber, con uh, fiber reinforced concrete. And there you find more information regarding these uh, clauses. But I will stay here today with the default values and use this one. Um, the next material that I need for the example that today is uh, steel, reinforcing steel. Um, therefore, I'm setting up these filters once again, and then we can select here oh, reinforcing steel, this one, and I will use this B500 here. And afterwards, I will do also a uh, comparison between this um, fiber concrete and a normal concrete. Therefore, I will just create a normal concrete material. Concrete and Euro code. And this is one here. Okay, so basically, I have both concrete materials, uh, C uh, 2025, but the first one is uh, including um, fibers or fiber. Uh, reinforcement and uh, the material here, the third one is a regular concrete material. Confirm that was okay. And the next um, topic I need to enter is a slab uh, or a thickness for the slab. And that will be 240 millimeters once with this concrete, uh, fiber concrete. And for the comparison with the regular concrete. Okay, so now we could import or enter the um, slab. Um, I would like to have a space of the edge of the slab to the center of the columns of 30 centimeters. Uh, to enter it graphically, I just um, modify here the um, grid. If I'm entering here 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 in both directions. Confirm that with OK. And now I can enter here the slab with the thickness of 240 millimeters and the fiber concrete material. Click on OK. And then we have the first point here. And the second one on the other end. And here I just have to uh, modify the origin of the grid, and then it looks like this. And this lab was entered. And just to have a better overview, a clearer overview, I will switch off the grid and also the uh, snapping points of the grid. Okay. Um, next topic is um, yeah modification of the slab itself so we will at first enter here supports um, i will use here a surface support with um, random stiffness um, i could probably also enter here a, um, a solid with the uh, geotechnical analysis um, add-on but that would be from more time intensive. So I'm just using here random uh, spring constant for this example today. Enter it. The next topics would be here regarding these chapters for concrete design. So we have to check here our uh, concrete covering. I will use here at the top side XC3. And at the bottom side, I will create a new one, and this should be XC2. And if you now wonder why these values won't be applied here, that's because the um, surface reinforcement is missing. I will just enter it here with a mesh. 
use this mesh here from the German product range. If I confirm that and go back here to go to concrete cover, then you see that the uh, concrete covering was applied correctly here. Uh, what I have to um, change or modify in the uh, tab with the design configuration is regarding the serviceability configuration. Um, if I'm designing a foundation slab, then I can um, yeah, think about changing the setting regarding the uh, AS min calculation due to restraint. In my example, I would like to use uh, pure tension restraint. So I'm switching this option here to pure, strain, pure attention restraint. And what's also possible, um, or at least in, uh, according to the uh, German National Annex um, and the commented version of the German National Annex, it is, for example, possible to reduce the um, uh, 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 strengths, tensile strengths of the concrete by a certain uh, factor, it's depending on the thickness of the slab. And according to the German national uh, annex, it would be possible to reduce here or use the reduction factor of 0 0.65 for slabs up to a thickness of 30 centimeters. So I will do so for this example. Um, for this example, I would like to deactivate the deflection analysis because that's not required here. And I will also uh, deactivate the automatic increasing of the longitudinal reinforcement here for serviceability. So that's basically all I have to change here in the serviceability config. I confirm that once again, and then we see here our slab already with the reinforcement. Um, just to have a better overview, I'm deactivating here the reinforcement so we see our pure concrete slab. Okay, the next topic um, I have to enter is the uh, FE mesh refinement on the nodes. So I'm switching maybe to this view. I'm selecting all the nodes on which I would like to apply the um, load afterwards and I will assign here a FE mesh refinement um, and therefore I will use here this rectangular one with a target length of five centimeters here in the uh, first element uh, next to the node. Okay, this one, okay. And what I would like to activate in the same way is here the uh, check for punching. Um, if I do so, then this tab here appears with the configuration for punching. And in this example, we have to check the configuration regarding punching because we do not have entered here any columns. So the program has no information about the um, section dimensions. So um, in the current setting, it would not be uh, able, or the program would not be able to generate the um, Parameters, uh, parameters for, for the punching. So therefore I can uh, define here a loaded area and I would use here for these nodes, nodes um, 25 centimeters in both directions. So with this setting, I will be also able to do the design checks even if I do not have entered a cross section here for the columns. Okay. That looks good. We'll confirm that. Okay. If I switch to the wireframe display mode, then we see here these um, nodal uh, FE mesh refinement. I will deactivate them. And if I generate the FE mesh, Yeah, and then we see that all refinements were activated or considered correctly. And the last topic I have uh, to enter here regarding the FE mesh is um, in the special objects, the surface result adjustment. I would like to use here smoothed results um, inside a, a certain um, result adjustment. So I will enter them here for the slab number one. 
and they will have a dimension of 0 .0, 0 0.5 meters. And the first one is here. You can confirm that. And now I can select it, click on copy three times from that point to that point. Okay. And then I will take these here and copy them also three times, but this time from this point here to this point. Okay. And then I will select these two. Just one copy from that point to that. So, okay. And the uh, surface result adjustments are now entered. I can just uh, check whether they were applied. Yeah, looks good. So, um, just to have a clear overview, I can deactivate here the mesh and also switch to the result objects and deactivate here the surface result adjustments. Okay. That looks quite good so far. So I will just save the file and now take care about the uh, loading. Um, as I have already shown you in the uh, steel structure, we have here uh, six load cases from a steel structure. Um, I will enter them here. So if I'm opening this dialog, the first one is self-weight, it's okay. Already the second was one, second one was uh, the snow. Snow, then we have wind in plus X. Okay, and then I can just make plus Y. and minus x and y. So, so these are the load cases from our steel structure and I will add also a seventh um, load case and that will be the live load on the slab and therefore I'm using here storage areas. Okay. Regarding the actions that was filled correctly here automatically. Um, then regarding the design situations, I do not need here this frequency, so I will delete it just to reduce the amount of calculation time. And um, before the um, load combinations will be generated, I can take a look at the action combinations. And just to avoid calculation time or too much calculation time in uh, today's example, I will just um, activate these action combinations where all four um, uh, action categories are active. The other one other one I will deactivate. So it looks like this. And if I click on the load combinations, then I have basically this load combinations to uh, consider today for the for the webinar. Okay. Um, that's all so far. So we can confirm that. Um, the next step is now to import the support reactions from the steel structure into this um, uh, file with this lab. Therefore, I'm going to the um, load wizard. And if I open here this chapter for the load wizard, maybe I'm just shutting down this a little bit that it's better for overview. If you go to the um, load wizard, then you find here a new option, um, import support reactions. So that is a new option since the version 6.3. Then we can create here a new load wizard. And now you can find here um, in this tab model, all the models inside a project folder in um, or in the same project folder for um, uh, where also is the uh, foundation slab um, uh, stored. So 
I have my steel hall in the same folder as the foundation slab, so the steel hall is here um, accessible. Then I can um, switch to the objects and enter here that I would like to um, use uh, the supported or the support reactions of the nodes 1 to 12. I have the same uh, numbering, so I can directly enter 1 to 12 here and then switch to loading. Click here on automatically and the program automatically finds the um, amount uh, of load cases from which I can import support reactions as I load into this file. Um, as you may know from RFM um, 5, there was it just possible to um, import vertical loads. In RFM 6, it's now possible to um, import also the horizontal forces and also the moments. Mm, I do not have entered moments here or I have uh, hinged support, so uh, for me it's okay just to activate here the horizontal forces in X, Y direction and the vertical force in Z direction. Then I can click on OK and maybe I switch to the serve weight. What you now see here is the uh, imported um, load. In this state, you just see here these question marks that comes um, uh, from the fact that the program does not know in this state the value of the load. That will be um, calculated now if I hit the button for the calculation. Then the, the program will at first um, yeah, calculate the support reactions in the steel structure once again. So you see it here, steel hall, steel structure, and then it will import the loadings to our foundation slab file. So both files are now um, yeah, combined together. So if I would um, update anything on the, um, on the loading um, of the steel hall, um, the program would automatically update here this loading. That's also um, new compared to RFM5. In RFM5, uh, this was a free nodal load. Now it's a object load, so a nodal load, and is also so it's it's uh, um, always in context to a, to a certain node. So we can also use it for the punching. And um, it is now, uh, or both files are now uh, connected to the, together regarding the update process. So that is new in RFM 6 now. Basically, that was everything regarding the um, modeling of the structure and the load. We have also um, our combination done so far. So I can go over to the um, add-on concrete design and just check the input data here. I'm going over to objects to design. And what's important now here is to check that uh, to design the slab is number one, that's okay. And our nodes one to 12 are um, active here or displayed in this uh, column to design. So that's also a hint that the input data was correct and the nodes are uh, correctly activated for design. With these settings, I can uh, basically start the calculation of the add-on. So you see now here, once again, this batch for load. That means that in the first step, the program will calculate the original file. Um, where we would like to import the support reactions, import these support reactions as loads, and then do the um, yeah, usual calculation uh, step here in uh, calculating the internal forces of the slab, and now the concrete design add-on. I guess that should be done in some seconds. And now we should be able to check the results here. So um, maybe I'm switching off the reinforcement here and also the design checks on nodes and we take care about the surface results at first. So I will open here this 
um, results navigator and maybe also the serviceability and ultimate limit state because um, the what the program actually does is um, it modifies the already existing um, equations according to uh, from the Eurocode 2 according to this mentioned um, design guideline from the German concrete uh, German committee of uh, concrete design um, and that means that the equations of the euro codes will be modified or um, extended according to this guideline and that's also the reason why we need a reinforcement here so um, if you do the design in the concrete design add-on um, then it's currently not possible to um, do the design just with fiber uh, concrete without a regular longitudinal reinforcement. So you always need um, a regular um, surface reinforcement for the slabs, um, or if you would do this in uh, for the members, then you would need a um, longitudinal reinforcement or a shear reinforcement. And the program would then just um, modify the equations from the Euro code um, uh, in terms of the fiber concrete or fiber reinforcement, fiber reinforced concrete material. So um, if we go through these um, individual design checks, let's um, say we take at first a look at the ultimate limit state. Um, if I activate it here, then we see that um, yeah, basically it is a problem of uh, punching, I would say here in this example, but I would like to show you this because if I open here this detailed results, then you see here, for example, this little F here as a index, and this shows you here uh, the shear capacity um, uh, in, um, consideration of uh, this fiber reinforced concrete. So uh, every time you see here this small f, then it means that this is uh, in consideration of this fiber reinforced concrete. If I would switch here to um, this intermediate result, then you see it here in the um, uh, panel here that these, uh, these values are a little bit uh, lower. So that is here the result or the uh, shear capacity without this fiber. And this one would here um, including these fibers, okay? So um, the fiber reinforced concrete will be um, considered for the ultimate limit state design checks and also for the serviceability. Maybe I'm switching over to the serviceability. There it's the same. So here in this example, all the design checks are fulfilled here now for this example. What's for, for, for such slabs? Maybe the mm, most decisive result is here the uh, minimum reinforcement due to restraint. And in this example, I'm almost at 90%. And I can also check here the um, required amount of reinforcement due to this restraint. And there you see exactly the same like for the ultimate limit state. You see here this small f and this shows you um, that uh, this is in this uh, minimum reinforcement is in consideration of this uh, fiber reinforced concrete. I will do afterwards a comparison of fiber reinforced concrete and normal um, yeah, concrete. Um, the last point I would like to show you here regarding the um, yeah, uh, results navigator is the or the results for the punching. So as I said before, for this slab, the punching is maybe the one of the decisive uh, design checks. And for the punching, if I'm switching off the results on the slab and activate it here on the notes, for the punching, it is basically the same. You have here also the small f, which shows you that this fiber reinforced concrete material will also be considered in the design checks for um, punching here. That's regarding the um, results navigator. If you would like to check it in more 
in a more, more detailed uh, um, uh, way, then you can switch over here to the design ratios on surfaces, for example. And if we go here to the shear capacity um, or shear resistance design check, for example, do a double click. Um, then you see here these equations, and um, this is here, uh, as I said before, that this um, uh, the short um, expression for the Deutsche Ausschuss für Stahlbetonbau, so the German Committee for uh, Concrete Design. And um, basically here you have the information how this um, guideline modifies the um, original equation from the Eurocode. So that's also um, important to know because, as I said before, um, it is a modification of a regular reinforced slab just with consideration of fiber reinforced concrete material. So you see here these equations which are used for the design checks. Um, that's for the um, shear capacity and the same is also for the, uh, I have to check what we find it, and the design ratios and surfaces. Here for the serviceability, yeah, for the minimum reinforcement, it's the same. So I can, um, yeah, show you these results here. There we have the same. If I would like to check here um, how the program is calculating the amount of required reinforcement due to restraint in consideration of this fiber reinforced concrete. Then I can also go here to the design um, check details. And if we go here down a little bit, then you find here, as I already uh, mentioned here, um, this guideline, the chapter in the Eurocode, then the equation of the guideline. And here you find how the program is uh, calculating the uh, minimum reinforcement due to restraint and with the small letter F um, uh, in consideration of this fiber reinforced concrete. Okay, that's regarding the results here. I guess that is um, pretty straightforward. So um, it is basically like you already know it from the regular results from the concrete design add-on. Um, now to have a comparison between the material um, with uh, yeah, fibers and the regular concrete, um, I would like to divide this uh, slabs, slab in two parts. And therefore I'm creating here just a line in the middle of the slab. And then I can do a right click on the surface and divide this. And now if I switch off, uh, switch on the uh, numbering, then we see that the slab number one was now changed to slab number two and three. That means that I have to take care about my um, special objects and the surface result uh, adjustments because they are assigned to a certain slab. So they are all still assigned to the slab number one. Um, therefore, I can select here this first half. It is now, uh, or it should be now assigned to slab number uh, two. And this here to slab number three. Okay, apply. And now they are in black again. So they are again, considered correctly. Mm. What we also have to check is our material. Um, I'm going over to the thicknesses. So the thickness number one is still used for both slabs. So I um, open here the edit surface dialog for the slab number three and just change here the thickness to this one. And then this slab, slab number three, will use our regular concrete material, and this slab number two will use our um, fiber reinforced 
concrete material here for the design check. We see also here in the um, table of the add-on and in the input data that we now have here the slabs number two and three. So that seems to be okay so far. We have still our um, we have still our uh, twelve punching notes here assigned. That looks also quite good. So I can directly hit the button to calculate the results once again. So and it's the same um, step as before. The program will update the um, loading from our steel hole um, and do the, the uh, do the the sign in the concrete design add-on once again. So we have also the um, Static and ana statical analysis once again, and the concrete design once again. Okay, let's check here the um, results on the surfaces. And I will go now to the required reinforcement here on the um, top side, maybe in direction one. And now you see here the effect of um, yeah, this lab with fiber reinforced concrete and here the regular, regular concrete. So on the right side, we now need uh, more reinforcement. Um, that is basically in all directions uh, the case. Um, here the values are pretty small because of the loading. Um, in such uh, yeah, examples, like for this uh, foundation slab, um, the uh, minimum reinforcement due to the restraint will be the most decisive result, I guess. So we can switch over to our serviceability results here. And uh, if I click here on the design check for the uh, minimum reinforcement due to restraint, we see now that on the left side, our design check is fulfilled with almost 90%. So it's the same value as before. But now on the right side, um, due to the fact that I did not consider here on the right side this um, fiber reinforced concrete, but just the regular one, on the re right side, um, the design check um, for the minimum reinforcement due to restraint is now not fulfilled. So that is uh, maybe a small example how you could use this fiber reinforced concrete material. That's basically already the end um, of um, my today's presentation. I will just um, give you one hint regarding um, slabs that are not reinforced. That is maybe also a quite common user case. So um, the the approaches today are based basically on the um, equations of the regular Euro code. And as I said before, we are just um, modifying these equations of the Euro code too, according to this um, guideline of the German Committee for Concrete Design. If you have slabs um, without regular longitudinal reinforcement and you would like to design them just with um, fiber reinforced concrete, then it's um, also possible, but then not inside the concrete design add-on. Uh, then you can create a new uh, material type um, and this material type would be uh, damage, the damage model. And then you can do a nonlinear calculation and do the design checks by analyzing the uh, strains and stresses um, for the um, yeah, material with material model um, damage. Uh, we have some webinars or not webinars, uh, some knowledge articles. Uh, on our website regarding this topic and they are also linked to our um, event page for this today webinar. So if you need further information regarding this material model damage, then you will find it uh, on our website for the today's um, event. And the last hint I would like to give you is 
um, everything that I have shown you today for these labs is also possible for the members. So I have uh, shown you this for these labs because from my point of view, it's the uh, maybe one of the most common use cases to, to use um, fiber reinforced concrete for slabs. Um, but you can also do this in the same way for members if you would like to do so. That's all from my point and I would yeah, hand over the screen back to Andreas. Okay, thank you, Paul, for this nice presentation. <clears throat> yeah, I would like to show you the website with yeah, where you can find the recording and the mentioned links and the uh, yeah, presentation slides. Before I do it, I would like to give you a hint if you want to book your free online appointment, uh, yeah, such a presentation of an add-on or of a product from us, from our software company, RFM, RSTAB, RWIND, etc. Just book yeah, this appointment by our sales team now with that link here, or you can scan the QR code. Also, if you would like to get a non-binding offer, then you can also contact, contact our sales team. I switch to the website. That's our website, lubal.com. And under news and events, you can find the webinars. And that's today's webinar. Yeah, that's the common webinars. This webinar in two weeks will be presented by Paul as well. Our section, this, or you can define our section sections and design them in RFM6. He will present that webinar. That's today's webinar. I click on it and you will get an email when the recording is online. You will find the recording in the middle here. Then you will find the presentation slides here and the mentioned links. And you can already find the model files here. Those are the model files from the German webinars. Yeah, but we are the same. Okay. Yeah, that should be all also from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to Paul for this presentation. Thanks to Alexander for answering the questions. Yeah, I wish all a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye. Ciao.